I've talked of the importance of getting weeds early. Let's talk a little bit about well, what happens when that doesn't happen. I have a couple beds here, nice raised beds that are intensively planted with dwarf fruit trees and in between at about five, six foot spacing. And in between each tree, I have a, a, a rooted cutting of a David Austin rose uh, that I propagated and, and planted here. So we have a pretty intensive setup here. And we will come in this fall with an edge planting. On the outside of each bed, a single row of something like narcissus, daffodils, ranunculus, anemones, some really nice winter, early spring blooming bulbs. They may be bulbs, corms, or tubers, but generally called bulbs. And add an, add an element uh, to this bed. Nice cut flowers in the spring, attract pollinators as well, then can visit the fruit trees as they bloom and help us set a good crop. Uh, so that just speaks to the little intensive nature of our planting scheme here. How can we use space at, I'm not going to say maximum, I'm going to say an optimum level, but high-end optimum. How many plants can we grow together? Different types of plants, maybe two or three in the same bed, so that the growth of one doesn't interfere with the other. And this setup, I think, will work quite well for us. When the flowering bulbs on the edge of the bed uh, are done in spring, we have an opportunity for a summer planting on the side here. It could be lettuce, it could be any number of things could be more annual flowers uh, like that, or it could be uh, bush beans or uh, umpteen possibilities. Well, that's then. This is now. What have we got here? We've got some pretty serious weed pet pressure. And how did this come about? Simply, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, my bad. Uh, I've been walking by these beds for about three months saying, you know, we really ought to get in there and get these weeds before they get established. And I uh, continued to walk on by, and today we're getting in there. I would that we had gotten in here earlier, it would have been less labor uh, and more effective. If we let these weeds go, and there are two principal species here, uh, and it is a, a, a South African bulb called uh, Oxalis, an invasive species, and another invasive species, Bermuda grass. Uh, the oxalis spreads by a little bulb underground, and the Bermuda grass spreads by what are called stolons. They are horizontal underground uh, stems that grow, root, grow. I'm sure you know the pattern, the aggressive uh, pattern of Bermuda grass. And so these are not weeds you can just knock them down on the surface, they'll just re sprout. So you've got to go in there, pry up the soil to the degree you can, get the root mass of the uh, Bermuda grass out and uh, most of the root of the oxalis. Um, and if we don't do that, uh, this will be uh, a, a carpet of those weeds come late winter, early spring, to the point where they severely affect the growth of the trees and the roses here. So let's take a look at the oxalis here. Let me also note, because this bed has been in a wood chip mulch, it has been relatively effective, that is the mulch, at suppressing annual weeds. And that's a great thing about mulches in general, particularly wood chip mulches in a perennial tree or rose system. Uh, they can just about virtually eliminate the emergence of annual weeds, but the perennial weeds are tougher, so you've got to get in there once you see the beginning of the emergence of any perennial weeds. My advice, get in there and nip it in the bud here. So let's take a look at the oxalis here. Uh, uh, a lot of people think it's, 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 it's clover. And it has a not dissimilar leaf structure, but it ain't clover, it don't fix nitrogen, and it's a pernicious weed. So I'm just gonna fracture down a little bit and try to get a good chunk of the tap root out. Uh, you could do this with a hand fork, a hand trowel, and in some cases you'll see this, uh, there I use the word cute, cluster of bulbs here. Uh, uh, cute in a botanical, or botanically interesting, but not cute from a gardener's perspective. And to the degree you can get those weeds out. These weeds will not go into the compost pile. In some cases, the manifestation of the oxalis is simply a tap root like that. So it's, it's necessary uh, to go and fracture and pull and remove 
And I might add, none of the weeds in this bed are going to go into compost, otherwise we'll be propagating these pernicious perennial weeds. They'll go in the green waste can uh, and go away. So uh, it's, it, it's tedious. It would have been easier to do this a month or so ago. Uh, the plants would be smaller, our movement would have been quicker, our attitude would have been better, and our effectiveness would have been higher. But we remain undeterred. We're going to get in here, get down to the mulch level, and then we'll reapply a new mulch for overwintering here. Maybe as thick as three, four inches. Again, serving to suppress annual weeds and to knock back these pernicious perennial weeds a bit. Uh, one good thing about Bermuda grass is it goes dormant in the winter, but it will reemerge in the spring. But you can bet. I'll be chasing by my walking on by thing here uh, next year, and we're going to be on this as soon as we see any emergence, nip it in the bud, as it were. Uh, let's look at the Bermuda grass up here, and uh, it's probably worth using a gardening fork like this. And again, you could sit down here and be extremely thorough and get every little last rootlet out stolen. Uh, and really knock it back. We're going to be somewhat less thorough than that, but not too uh, slip shot. So I'm just going to fracture down. And you can see the stolons. Let me grab my hand tool here. Uh, again, the spreading of the Bermuda grass is by, via stolons. This is what the stolon looks like. Uh, and the stolon is simply an underground horizontal stem and like stems it has nodes and at each node it can emerge new roots and new shoots. So if I were to take this and break this up, I can create oh, umpteen new Bermuda grass plants here. And to a certain extent when you dig and disrupt you are propagating it, but you're also having a weaker piece here, vegetative piece, that will come back less strong. And if you're persistent, if it comes back and you get in there and it comes back and you get in there, you will, in a short period of time, by and large, eradicate it. So I would come in and just loosen the soil a little bit and expose the root mass like this. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time digging down. Again, this is not a complete uh, strategy, but to the degree I can go down and get a bunch of the root mass, it would be a good thing. So it's really worth, unfortunately, it's necessary to take a chunk of time to kind of disrupt uh, and remove, and again, most importantly, do not put this in the compost pile, or you're going to have yourself a Bermuda grass farm. Okay, we stepped in and tried to make good a situation that wasn't so good. We had a pretty good mass of Bermuda grass and emerging oxalis weeds. We got down, dug them out, took them away, and then now we've applied a good three, four inch layer of wood chips, commonly called ramial wood chips. Um, and these are just the chipping, small chippings from deciduous and evergreen trees. I find them to be an excellent utilitarian tool for fertility in tree systems, in tree shrub systems with woody plants, not so much with annuals. Uh, so we've applied a three or four inch layer of these wood chips here and you see how we've squared it up and we have a nice slightly curved bed rectilinear straight down the sides um, and so this will suppress the emergence of annual weeds almost 100 percent effectively and retard the re-emergence of our perennial weeds in this case oxalis and bermuda grass but you can bet i've been chastened by having let it go this last summer and the moment we start to see the re-emergence of the pernicious weeds will be in there rooting them out 
and keeping uh, the resources uh, available for the young fruit trees and the roses we have in this bed. And these are one-year-old trees and roses that were just planted about two or three months ago. They were propagated from cuttings last winter, grown up, and potted onto gallons, planted out. And by the middle of next summer, we should have some pretty good uh, space filled with the young trees and really good space filled with the roses. Will we have any fruit on these trees going in a year or two, we may, we may not. It may be advisable to pick the fruit off, let the resources of the tree grow to solely establishing its wood, woody structure and then let them fruit the third year. But we'll have roses of plenty to smell and to pick.